Hey, what's up, Mad Men fans? Kino here, um, and we are finally back with a new season of Reactions. Um, I know it's been a long time. Uh, I got very busy with the Breaking Bad logs. I'm still working on the Breaking Bad logs even now. Um, but I know a lot of people wanted these Mad Men reactions, and to be honest, I wanted them too. Um, I really enjoy this show. It's, it's really well written, and um, I'm excited to jump back into it. I will admit it I had to get a little bit readjusted to it for being gone for so long. Um, also, they skip forward in time, so it's like it's hard to sometimes ground yourself in where the story is taking place. Um, so we open the episode this time with them in a new office. Um, they're not in the hotel room anymore, which I was kind of disappointed. I was like, I, I would have liked to see them. Uh, Sorry about that. I my screen <laughs> turned like turned off for a second. The the power cable came out. Uh, hopefully that didn't interrupt the uh, recording. No, it didn't. Um, but uh, I would have liked to see them kind of be like a young, scrappy upstart. I mean, they still are. Um, but uh, yeah, it would have been cool to see them operating out of that hotel room for a while. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but. Uh, in this episode, it's Thanksgiving. Um, Dawn is divorced from Betty. Um, she has the kids, and he's supposed to have the house, um, but they're still living there. Uh, her and uh, this guy, she's uh, the guy she married, um, and uh, you know the, the children are they miss their father. You know, typical you know kind of divorce story. Um, Betty is having conflict with Sally, as she always does. Again, she's um, not the kindest mother in the world, especially to Sally. Um, but uh, and, and her new family uh, of the guy she married does not like her. Um, and so we, we see there's some trouble in paradise uh, with this new with this new relationship that they're in. Um, you know, Don is now alone. He's living in a in a small apartment in new york um we see him banging like you know horse uh, or one whore at least um and she's like slapping him in the face as they have sex like he's trying to punish himself um th this show's not afraid to show dawn in a very bad light like not bad as in like morally bad but like almost a little pathetic you know it's like we can see how sad dawn's life has become well, again, I don't. This show's not something like Breaking Bad, where we're supposed to like hate Don. By the end, I don't think you're supposed to hate Don. You know, there's parts of him you're like, oh, you're you're self destructive, or you're like, you know, egotistical, or or other you know bad traits. But he's, I I don't think he's a bad person per se. I I, I think he's made some mistakes. Um, but at the end of the day, he still has a concern and a humanity that like you know tony soprano or walter white does not necessarily have um but uh peggy uh peggy has this subplot this episode with like staging a fight for a ham um and overall she seems more assertive like again years have passed since last season like at least one year um and she's much more confident now like even the way she kind of delivers her lines a little bit, it's like a little bit more, I don't, the sultry is not the right word, but kind of more calm and like, you know, like she's just kind of grown into the woman comfortable in the, in this role in a way she, she wasn't, you know, in the first or second season or even kind of the third, she was kind of getting there in the third, but um, she still kind of felt like the, the girl in the room versus again we, we don't know the, the full story of what's going on with her um this season or not but um it's it seems like she's more confident in a role and she's like you know she's like not bossing people around in a rude way but she's like you know she's got a little like artist boy working for her and like you know she's talking to pete and stuff and it's like there's just a sense that she's grown and matured um and again i think we're going to continue to see peggy's rise i don't know there might be some like cataclysmic thing that happens with her but if if her career trajectory continues to go this way there'll be conflict sure but um i think we're going to see her really um 
step into her own, maybe step into like a leadership role, or maybe even leave um, uh, Sterling Cooper, uh, Draper Price, whatever it's called now, um, because she has this kind of love hate relationship with Dawn. Like she she loves Dawn, she looks up to him, she wants to be like him, but she also I think there's this thing of like. I want your respect, and I, I think she's going to realize the only way to really get the respect from Dawn is to go off on her own and to do her own thing. That's what Dawn really uh, respects more than anything. We see that a little bit in this episode with her, um, uh, the little scam she runs and she doesn't tell Dawn, but um, I, I think that's where we'll see her go overall. Um, there's this minor subplot with like this bikini company that's like, they're like, we sell bikinis, but or, or I guess two pieces. There's a distinction there. But we don't want them sexy. We don't we're we're an old grandpa company. We don't want no sexy, you know, uh <laughs> swimwear. Um and Don's just like at the end, he's like, get the fuck out of my office, because they didn't want like his pitch. Um And oh also I should talk about the main thing this episode. The episode's called public relations, but um uh Don does this like newspaper article um about himself uh and he he acts like you know like don always is. he doesn't like talk about his past um and it comes off very badly in the interview um and so at the end don is like playing up like their success and their customers and everything and being like fake and phony i mean being fake and phony to who he usually is he he was also being fake in the first interview in the sense of like he like Don Draper is a fake identity and he doesn't like to discuss it, doesn't like to discuss himself. But again, as we've established in the show, it's not that Don's necessarily like he just doesn't want to talk about his past. It's like he's scared of his past. You know, he um, is scared of who he was and becoming that person again. And so his rejection of, of who he is in his past is motivated by fear. Um, and I think that's the big lesson here is like. At the end, he had to be comfortable putting on a character in a way that he's not really used to. Um, there's a lot of different ways to read it, but uh, I've been going on, on about this for a little while now. Um, but it, it's good to be back in the swing of things. Like, I feel like these Mad Men reactions, I, I tend to have a lot of stuff like to talk about in terms of character. It usually kind of sets me off on a rant. Versus there's some other shows I, I watch and I'm like, eh, you know, it's like, yeah, this happened. It's like, it was all right. Like Boardwalk, I, I think, was kind of like that for for a, f a number of episodes. I was like, yeah, stuff happened, but there's nothing to talk about. But here, the characters are so rich and so deep that um, there really is a lot of material for, here for me to dissect. Even though I know I'm missing most of the stuff. Just because it's, it's the first watch through. But... Um, as always, I hope you guys enjoy my nonsensical ramblings, and uh, we'll check out the next episode soon. So, talk to you then. Hey, what's up, Mad Men fans? Uh, back with another episode reaction. Um, just watched the second episode of Season 4. Um, Christmas comes once a year, which um, I'm pretty sure is like a sexual pun, too, given uh, what happens in this episode. But... Um, it's it's Christmas time again, um, and uh, you know Sterling Cooper is uh, th is not flush with money, right? They're a small firm now; they don't have a lot to spend, um, and so they weren't going to do like a big Christmas thing. But uh, their client, uh, Lucky Strike, um, the dude Lee, who is like a total jackass, um, but he is like their number one client, so. Um, they have to make him happy, and he wants to come to the Christmas party, so they do it up big. He kind of humiliates Roger Sterling just because he can, because he's got power um, over them. But, um, you know, Roger endures it. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, Freddie uh, Rumson's back, which is cool. Um, you know, he got fired in the second season or so, or maybe it was the third season, but... Um, he got let go because, um, you know, he was a drunkard and he pissed himself and now he's completely sober. Um, he comes back and he's, um, reunited with Peggy who they had a, a nice kind of friendship before. Um, he's kind of like a mentor to her almost. He's the one who got her into, um, advertising. 
Um, but, you know, they have some conflicts because he's very old fashioned, a nice guy, you know, in a lot of ways, like different than these other kind of jag offs like, um, you know, like Pete Campbell or uh, Paul, whatever, whatever the other guy's name was, you know, the guys who are like manipulative, like sexually, like they're just trying to get in Peggy's pants. It's like um, th- this guy helped her and he didn't expect anything in return. He just genuinely was like not not someone who takes advantage like that. Um, but he's an old fashioned guy. So it's like, and she's in her new kind of, um, assertive, you know, she, she's grown, she's matured a lot since, you know, she's not the scared little secretary anymore. Um, she is confident in her ability and, and confident in her work. So they butt heads a little bit, but they, they come together at the end again. Um, and he gives her some advice about, you know, whether she should sleep with her boyfriend or not, or if she wants to get married. Um, again, it's old fashioned advice, but um, you know, it, 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 we've seen that they, they, he, he's wise in some things in the way she's not, and she has a more modern perspective than he does. So um, it's interesting to see them work together. And I, I didn't talk about this last one because I wasn't a hundred percent sure who it was, but it just reminded me that like, she's got a new boyfriend. Um, and I think it's, uh, at the end of the third season, I think, or, or near, near the end of the third season, she met a boy in like a bar, um, at like, at like a college bar. Um, and so they're together and he thinks she's a virgin. Um, which again, she, you know, she's already given birth. So it's like, you know, she, she, she doesn't tell him that or anything, but, um, uh, the, the, he wants to have sex with her and she's been like, no, I don't want to have sex yet. Um, wait till marriage kind of thing. And then she does end up having sex with him. Um, which we'll see what happens. Cause, uh, Freddie said like, you know, if, if, if she does that, then yeah, he might not want to marry her, but maybe he still will want to, or maybe she won't want to because she, she does. She's not sure whether she wants to be with this guy forever. So, uh, we'll have to see. Um, but then we have a subplot with Don um, and his uh, secretary. So, um, again, Don's not someone who, like, sleeps with his secretaries, right? He's He, he tends to philander around with everyone but his secretaries, right? The, even his neighbor, like, there was some flirtiness going on between them. But um, he's drunk. He forgets his keys at the office, and he has his secretary come and bring him to him. And then when she's there, you know, he grabs her, and, like, they he starts kissing her and they have sex and you know, she's into it. She likes him. Um, and then the next day, uh, she, you know, she's like, you know, giggly and like, like it's a day after kind of thing. You know, she likes Dawn that way. And he's just kind of like not cold to her, but he's like, he doesn't address it in any kind of way. Um, I mean, he remembers of course, but, uh, you know, he, uh, he's just like, yeah, here, Here's your fifty dollar bo- or hundred dollar bonus. Um, that'll be all. <laughs> so she was kind of expecting more than that, and it was it was sad, you know. Yeah, you know, she 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 seemed like a nice girl, and you know, again, I'm not I'm not saying Don should get with her or anything. You know, it's not the best idea uh, for again him to be. I mean, he already did a damage of sleeping with her, but you know, he's not he's not necessarily gonna marry her. But it's like. He was obviously feeling sad this whole episode um, about being away from his family at Christmas. And it's like, you've just been given another chance of, like, another human being who, like, kind of genuinely likes you. Like, she wasn't, you know, she wasn't, like, like trying to use him for money or anything. She just was like, ooh, like, you know, this was nice. I I like this. And, you know, she was, she was into him. And it's like, you had... Don like has he throws away like every chance of like genuine like love or affection he he gets he runs away from it um same thing with Betty and his family and then when he when they're gone he's like oh I miss him so much and then again another woman comes into his life right here where he could you know theoretically again have some love from her again not necessarily that he should like marry her or anything like that but um to be so cold and distant to her given the emotional place he was in last night it's like ugh now i thought about maybe it's um maybe it's that she left um after they had sex and maybe he was angry at her um i don't know if that's 
what it was or not. Um, but it, it does seem to fit with Don's character more that he's just like, again, that's the kind of guy he is. He, he runs away from intimacy after sex, you know, it's like, he wants that part, but any kind of like genuine warmth or love, you know, he, he just pushes that away. Um, but what else here? Uh, oh, the, the last thing I want to talk about was, uh, we get the return of Glenn who, uh, he, his mom is like remarried some other guy or something. And he runs into Sally again. Um, and I think he likes her and, she tells him that she's not happy in their house. Again, she misses her dad. And again, she has problems with her mom. Um, so he and a friend go to the house when they're not home and they trash the place except for Sally's room. And she, she takes it as a gesture of um, affection from this boy. So that's nice to see. And I also, I, th this kid is the, uh, the son of Matt Weiner, I believe. Um, I, I either read that or I, I heard it somewhere, but um, there's something, I don't know, not poetic, I guess, but the son of Matt Weiner kind of having a little bit of a of a child romance with um, the daughter of Don Draper. It's like, from a creator standpoint, I don't know, that, that must like be interesting as the writer of the show to have your kid... Um, being involved with uh the daughter of your main character like there's there's something that like makes it almost like you're part of the story more than just writing it you know but anyway i just thought that was an interesting point um but that's everything i uh, have to talk about this episode i will uh, check out the next one and i'll talk to you guys soon hey what is up everyone kino here and i'm back with another uh, madman reaction and I'm, of course, uh, looking cool as always because, you know, this is Mad Men and everyone's cool on there. Uh, and I, I wear these glasses when I have my uh, eye sty. Uh, I don't want to show it on camera. So um, that's what these glasses are. I actually got them at VidCon. So um, they, they serve a purpose, actually. But um, in this episode, we uh, this is the third episode of season four. Um, the Good News, I believe it's called. Um this is an interesting episode. We get we get some good character stuff with um, both Don and Lane. Now Lane has been the character, you know, the newest one introduced, and we haven't really like developed him out a lot. Um, but this one, uh, we kind of get some moments with him, so that's that's cool. But um, it's New Year's. Um, Don is going to California to go visit with um, I believe her name is Anna. It's the woman who was uh, married to the original uh, Don Draper. And they have a very close kind of like almost brother and sister relationship, I'd say. Um, he goes out there with her. Of course, he fucking <laughs> he finds some young girl to hit on, of course. Um, it's it's the niece of, of this woman, which um, as if <laughs> as if their fucking relationship was not complicated enough as it is. He now has to go hit on her like. 20 year old niece it's i don't know don's don is uh don but um basically he learns that she's got bone cancer and she doesn't know it yet basically uh her family like got the diagnosis and they don't want to tell her because she's not going to live long um and this really you know fucks with don because this woman is arguably the only like real family he's ever had like even betty and stuff um, they even talk about it in this episode how he he kept like so many secrets from her because she she could never like understand who he is, um, but this woman could, um, and so to see her, to have her basically be ripped away from him, um, it's very sad. And um, I you know Don's just I don't know what he's gonna do. It's kind of like one of his only real remaining human connections. Um, but then he, he leaves because he doesn't want to tell her the truth. So he goes back to New York and Lane is there, even though it's the holidays. Um, he got to a little bit of a fight with Joan um, because uh, she wanted some days off and he um, uh, was being mean to her about it. Um, but then his secretary screwed up and they both were kind of like on the same page about like firing her and stuff. So it's like, you know he was kind of treating Joan like she was like this, like, you know, silly little girl 
but in reality, you know, she's she knows what she's doing as like the leader of the secretary is like like she she's hardcore. So I think I think he came away with some more respect for her um than he he had originally. Um then he runs into Dawn. Um they both have no family over the holidays. Uh Lane's wife went back to England. Um and I don't know if it's kind of implied that, that she's gonna divorce him. Um she said she's not coming back to New York. Again, I don't know if that means like divorce or if or she she's just gonna live over there and just not basically see him. Um but he he hangs out with Dawn um they go get drunk they watch movies they, they have a kind of like a bro moment together uh they end up uh <laughs> sleeping with like prostitutes together um i don't know i guess that's something you do with your bro but um yeah it was a it was an i mean it's kind of like a it's a nice moment but it's also you know like kind of scummy it's just it's just you're like this is not this is not kind of a really good life that Don has, you know, just banging whores in his in his apartment. Like, you know, there's some people like, oh, my God, it's so cool. He's got all this money and freedom and stuff. But, it, you know, it's like w without a family, he's not happy. Um, so it's like it's like a distraction more than happiness, I would say. Um, but that was cool. We got, again, some character between the two of them. Um, I hope we get to develop Lane more because um yeah i love the actor jared harris i believe his name is um and uh yeah i'd love to see more of more from him than just being like the british guy on the show um but uh what else what else what else here um oh also joan is like trying to get pregnant but um her husband is being shipped off possibly to vietnam they don't know so like the future's uncertain and then she like cuts herself um at the end here like accidentally but i don't know if it's accidentally or not um i think she might have done it on purpose to like give him like something to do basically to fix her and it's like maybe kind of like reassuring that like oh you know this is what he does he's a doctor um again i couldn't quite tell if she did it on purpose or it was an accident uh, i think maybe it was an accident I don't know. Some of these things, it's like it's open to interpretation, uh, what they do. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's going to work out between the two of them, to be honest. I think they're just on different wavelengths. Um, but there is a kind of a nice moment when he's, like, patching her up and he's telling her jokes and stuff. And you're like, okay. You know, this guy is kind of a rapist. Um, like, he, uh, he, he took her by force kind of that one time, which... You know, it's like, I don't know. She didn't... She was kind of saying no, but, like, it's like... He maybe thought it was just play playful no. It wasn't like he was, like, beating her or something. It, it was, it was you know, in a, in a gray area, to be sure. And it looked like it made her uncomfortable. But, you know, since then, I think she's moved past it. But um, setting all that aside, you know, that moral morally questionable act, um, he... You know he he was calm with her and stuff and making her laugh and it seemed like okay there's there's some affection here but i just think that the problems they have in their relationship with where joan wants to be um is gonna make it like this is gonna come to a head it's not gonna end up the fairy tale she always wanted um maybe he'll get killed in vietnam i don't know um but uh yeah we'll, we'll really have to see but um, that's pretty much the episode. Uh, thank you guys for watching this. Um, I know it's been... <laughs> I've been taking my sweet time getting through this <laughs> this season. But um, I am excited to, to watch it more. And uh, yeah, we'll check out the next episode soon. So talk to you guys then. Hey, what's up everyone? Back again. Uh, just watched another episode. Um, this, one, this one's called The Rejected. This is the fourth episode of season four. Um, and, uh, this is a strong episode in terms of, like, I, I like how it was all kind of tied together thematically, the two, uh, or three kind of storylines happening. Um, the first is with, um, Pete, uh, Pete Campbell. He is told that he has to get rid of his, um, uh, father-in-law's, uh, clear so that's what it's called um basically they have another uh company signing on with them um 
and uh, they, it's like a there's a conflict of interest there, so they have to get rid of him. Uh, he doesn't want to because he works so hard on that account, um, and it's also distracted by the fact that um, he learned that Trudy is pregnant, um, so he's finally going to have a kid. Um, so he, at the end of the episode, he kind of decides to push his father-in-law to give him the whole business, uh, which he does. And I guess they still have to get rid of Clearasil, um, which I, I guess, I don't know. I thought, I originally thought it was like, oh, they're going to get the whole company. So it's bigger than the smaller company that they were bringing on. So they would have got to keep Clearasil, but I guess they're going to give Clearasil to, um, uh, they're actually giving it to Ken Cosgrove. So he's back. Um... They have a kind of a weird little interaction together. Um, I think he's like, you know, Pete has always viewed Ken as kind of competition for him. Um, so I guess this is kind of like a token of peace between the two, we'd say. Um, but that's one storyline. Um, and again, I guess I guess you could say that Ken is kind of like the rejected because he... Uh, he didn't get brought on to this new company that uh, the Sterling Cooper Draper Price. And so I think Pete feels kind of bad for him. Although you could say that maybe he was the rejected too because um, of the way his father-in-law had been kind of um, not giving him the whole business or... I don't know, there's different ways to look at it. But that's one of the meanings of the title. Uh, the other is with um, Peggy. So she meets this girl who's like a lesbian, but, you know... She, Peggy's not a lesbian um but basically she invites her out they go out to this like art show in like some abandoned New York sweatshop like you know it's like one of those cool hip you know hipster scenes um uh and uh the the police raid and then she goes into the closet with this one guy and he kisses her and stuff and um I think maybe she might become more more interested in like artistic writing rather than just business writing which is what she's been doing um but uh the the he the guy was the, the the artist guy he was rejected from life magazine so he was one of the other rejecteds but um basically we see kind of a contrast at the end of the episode with pete um with the kind of old time business guys and um peggy with the young hipster crowd um and they share a look because she learns that Trudy's pregnant and there's kind of like this unspoken thing between her and Pete about like, you know, we they both know that they had a baby together um, and she gave it up. Um, so there's kind of like this like. I, I don't think either of them really want to be together, but it's like, oh, what could have been, you know, um, so that that was interesting. But um, what else here? Oh, the last thing, of course, is uh, Don and his secretary, um, Allison. Uh, she's part of this, like, I guess they call it, um, like, a focus group or whatever. Like, basically asking questions to determine the best way to market their product. Um, and she is basically reminded about what happened between her and Don. And she decides to quit because she's it's too hard for her to be around him. Um, and there's this great scene where she's like, you know, can you write me a letter of recommendation? He's like, you know, you can write it yourself and I'll just sign it. And then she throws something at him, which um, it, it was a really great moment because it's like what was so upsetting to her is just that Dawn refused to basically give any amount of intimacy to her after they had sex. Um, refused to demonstrate in any way that he, you know, cared about her or thought about her at all. Um, and again, I... I, w I was saying before that it was like it was kind of shitty how Don treated her and it's like Don is a man who's so clearly in need of like love and intimacy and he rejects it every opportunity he can not to say that he should be with this girl because obviously it's his secretary you know there's all sorts of work problems like we see in this episode but um, even still the way he keeps everyone at like arm's length is very um, hard for people who are not like that who are not as cold as he is you know um, I don't even know if this girl wanted to be with him that way, but she wanted to feel like she meant something to him and he refused to give her that. So very cathartic moment. And then at the end of the episode, they assign um, him this old lady secretary because I think they're like, they know what's going on. They're like, Don, you, you bang this girl. 
you created all these problems at work. Um, you know, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta not let you get away with this. Um, so that, that was funny, but a really strong episode thematically, all the elements were tied together. I, I love the storyline with the secretary that they didn't just drop it. Cause I, I think there's something profound there about the way that Don treats people, not just women, but people in general, the way he's so closed off to love and intimacy. It's just, you know, he, he runs away. That's how, that's how he always is. Um, and it absolutely does affect the people around him. I think they're hurt by the way he treats them. Um, and that's kind of Don's real fatal flaw. You know, he's not a murderer like Tony Soprano or Walter White, but he is, in some ways, I don't want to use the word abusive, but kind of in a way that he he's withholding of emotion and it, it hurts the people around him. It hurts his family. Um, again, not in an evil kind of way like Tony or Walter, but um, in, a, in a kind of a shitty personal way. Um, but he's, he's a wonderful anti-hero. Um, it's just that the stakes are not murder and, and, and crime and stuff. It's like personal, um, interactions, you know, work, family, life. That's the way he's an anti-hero. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think I'll leave it there. Um, so probably going to watch another one pretty soon here because, uh, I am enjoying the season. We got, we got a lot of good stuff here. So talk to you guys soon. And I'm back again, just watched a, uh, another episode on the same day. Um, this time we watched the fifth episode, uh, The Chrysanthemum and the Sword. Um, this is a cool one, because it's, uh, most of the stuff's focused around one kind of storyline, um, although there is some stuff with Sally, so I will knock that out of the way. Um, Sally is acting out, um, partially because, you know, she misses her dad and I think wants the attention. Part of it, it's like, I think she's also just kind of growing up a little bit and, like, um, you know, exploring herself, so to speak. Like, so she cuts her hair when she's not supposed to. Um, she's, like, touching herself at a sleepover. It gets in trouble for it. So um, this obviously kind of, you know, freaks her parents out. And uh, they uh, Betty specifically decides to... Um, take her to a psychiatrist um you know she says she doesn't really believe in psychiatrists because she went to one back in like the first or second season um but uh you know it's funny because um when she goes to talk to the child uh, psychiatrist or psychologist or whatever um she ends up talking to her like she's her therapist because again it's that classic kind of like tony soprano thing where he like you know, when, when remember when he was talking to AJ's psychiatrist, and he t ended up talking about himself, like, and it it ties into what um, the uh, the focus group lady. I don't know what she does there, but um, I guess she just w runs focus groups. Um, and she talked about how people just naturally want to talk to strangers, um, so it, it ties together there. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so we'll see more of Sally, but, um, you know, I think she's just growing up and, you know, she's had a slightly troubled childhood. Um, but I don't know if there's anything quote unquote wrong with her. I think she's just, you know, a little bit different. Um, and it makes sense cause she's Don Draper's daughter. Um, but, uh, even still, so that's one storyline happening. Um, the main one though is with, um, uh, Sterling Cooper, they're potentially going to get Honda as a, a customer. So at this time, Honda's uh, pretty much only known for motorcycles. They're just starting to explore getting into automobiles. Um, and we, of course, know how big, you know, Honda's going to be eventually. Um, so they, they want, they really want to get this client, but the only problem is Roger Sterling. Um, you know, he was a veteran of the First World War. He fought in Japan, uh, or, not First World War, sorry, Second World War. Um, and uh, he hates the Japanese. Um, you know, he, you know, he's still stuck in the past. He, he still views him as the enemy. Um, and I, I wonder, is Honda the one that made? There was one Japanese. It was either Honda or Mitsubishi 
one of them was responsible for making um, the the Japanese airplanes that attacked Pearl Harbor. Uh, I'm not sure which which one specifically, but um, they do point out in this episode how Volkswagen also was um, a Nazi company originally, and now and now they just you know they just make cars. Um, so everyone besides Roger is all on board with getting them, but Roger comes in at the end and starts insulting uh, the Japanese, um, and uh, it's basically clear that they're not going to get the uh, the client. So Don comes up with this genius idea. There's this guy who's been like um, stealing customers of theirs and like he's kind of on Don's heels and he's kind of obnoxious too. Um, and so Don has an idea to trick him basically into spending way too much money on a commercial. Um, they, he basically makes them think that they're going to film a commercial. Um, and so this guy decides we're going to film a commercial too. Um, but in reality, it's a trap to get them to spend way too much money on it. It will um, break the rules. Um, and so uh, the Japanese won't pick them. Um, and even though the Japanese won't pick them either, now these guys are basically going to be out of business. So um, it's it's a pretty genius strategy on Don's part. Um, and uh, they do they end up getting the contract, I think, for Honda cars, not the, the motorcycle line, but the car line. So um, I thought that was that was a pretty cool, you know, strategy there. Um, gosh, I think that's pretty much everything that happens in the episode. Um, we learned that 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 uh, Mark that focus group lady is not married. Um, so <laughs> I pretty much assume if any woman is single on this show, Don's gonna sleep with her. It's just it's just what he does. Um, but uh, we'll have to see. And, and I. I like his new secretary. It's very, they have very funny scenes where she's just like so old and like out of touch with <laughs> how to do the job. It's, um, it's, uh, it's very funny to see, but a uh, short episode. I thought that was pretty good. We got some good stuff on Roger. Uh, it's always fun to see him doing stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty much everything I have to say. And, uh, who knows? I might check out another one after this. We'll see. So talk to you guys then. All right, just knocked out another episode. Um, this one is called Waldorf Stories. Um, and this is an interesting episode. Um, so basically, Dawn wins an award for that. Um, uh, I forgot what it was. It was like a mopping thing. But um, uh, it was the one that everyone was talking about. And he won an award for it. And he's like super like pumped up and happy about it. Um, almost like uncharacteristically so he's like really full of himself um I don't know Th I, I kind of felt about Dawn in this episode the same way some people feel like uh, chasing it uh, for the um, the Sopranos which was actually written by Matt Weiner too the, the showrunner of this show but um, he uh, th this episode feels almost uncharacteristic just like how some people felt like Tony was like not acting like himself um, in this one, Don is, like, really arrogant, really full of himself. Um, uh, he He's on a fucking binge. Like, he sleeps with, I think, like, two different women. Like, he like he takes one woman home, and then he wakes up the next day with a different woman. And I think the implication is that like, he went out and, like, got another woman on top of this while he was blackout drunk. Um... Oh my god, fucking Don. Forgets to pick up his kids while he's at it. He's just like, he's just on a roll. Um, and, uh, you know, Peggy's a little pissed off too, because she's like, um, she, she felt like she deserves credit for that. Let me tilt this screen a little bit. Um, she felt like she deserved credit for the ad too, because she wrote a lot of it. Um, Don just, I guess, did the cowboy thing that everyone liked. Um, but, uh, yeah, Don's so funny in this episode. This is, like, this is guy who's, like, the cousin of uh, Roger's wife. Um, and he comes in asking for a job, and he, he pitches them, like, these, like, really lame, um, like, ads. It's, like, for, um, like, every single product, he's, like, the cure for the common whatever. Uh, and then Don ends up pitching it to Life Cereal while he's fucking blackout drunk. Um, and they like it, so they go with him, and so they have to hire this guy. It's pretty funny. Um, 
Fuck. I mean, that's a funny episode. But at the same time, Roger Sterling is also feeling very um, uh, jealous of um, Don because no one ever offers him the praise for what he does, which really is not a whole lot. We see him in his office basically, like, dictating his own novel to his secretary, like, his life story. Um, and we get flashbacks to when Don was, like, a fur salesman, and then um, he convinces Roger Sterling to hire him, and Roger's like, oh, this guy, um, this is the guy who will show me up. When, like, like he, he he's, re- he's reflecting backwards, and it's like, oh, man, I'm, I... Not that he made a mistake, because, like, you know, Don paid for himself ten times over, but, you know, he's kind of not relevant anymore, and it's kind of because Don is showing him up so much. Um, so that's that's happening on one angle. And then we have another thing happening, which is um, Ken Cosgrove joins um, Sterling Cooper again. Uh, he's bringing a bunch of clients over, but Pete is jealous. Um, he is a partner now, so that... That, that did happen, even though his name's not on the door. Um, so he has, you know, approval. Um, he's got approval power over hiring him or not. Um, but he kind of asserts his authority over Ken. Um, and, you know, Ken is uh, one of these, like, nicer guys. Like, I, I don't... I mean, I know what Pete's problem is. Pete's an asshole. Um, and he doesn't want to be... He's jealous of Ken. But really, Ken Ken has always been one of the nicer ones there. You know, very chill, very calm. That, that's what kind of annoys Pete, I think. Um, him basically being like, he's just like a naturally cooler person than Pete is. So Pete's jealous of that. Um, but they're they're kind of getting the shot back together. I mean, we don't have obviously Paul Kinsley around, um, and obviously Sal went the way he did. Um, but uh, yeah, it's cool we get to see Ken again. Maybe maybe they'll bring up some of these other characters back over time. But um, you know, I it's it'll be interesting to see their new dynamics and stuff because a lot's changed and also kind of nothing's changed. It's uh, it's still the same way it always is. Um, oh, and then there's this see there's this funny it, this is a funny episode. There's this funny scene with like um, Peggy and I guess this guy's their new like kind of like what Sal did, except he's doing it with video or film or something. Um, he's kind of an asshole, and he's, like, always talking about being nude and stuff. Um, and so Peggy Peggy and, and this guy get locked in a hotel room together because they have to work. Um, and so, she like, she's, like, tired of his shit, so she just gets naked, and they decide to work together naked for a while. And he eventually gets kind of, like... Um, I know the word... I guess ashamed is the word. Not a shame but he's like he's hard when he sees her and stuff um and he was saying how she's ugly you know so it's like she's like oh yeah bitch well look at me naked and now you got a you know, hard on so um he's kind of putting his place a little bit um which i thought it was cute i was like kind of goofy this episode was really kind of goofy but um i was like all right peg you're you're uh she's confident in and of herself you know um Again, I think it's the way you, you carry it a lot of the ways. Like, is Peggy the, the prettiest girl on the show? No, no, of course not. But she know, she's confident enough in herself to stand up for herself now. Um, and I think that's uh, that's some cool character growth we've got with Peggy. She's one of the more dynamic characters on the show. Like, definitely, like, we've seen her really kind of growing as a character over the seasons. Um, so... Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much where we're at right now. Um, we'll see how things go with future episodes, but um, a goofy, weird episode, but still very entertaining. Um, so uh, we'll see if I watch another one here, but uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, so I just knocked out another episode, and I'm really glad I did because this is a really good one. Um, this is the episode, The Suitcase. Um kind of reminded me of the episode the carousel like both in terms of like the title and like i guess in terms of the themes um although that episode's a little bit different but um this one is a little bit of a bottle episode um i guess maybe bottle episode's not the right term um because it does take place in multiple locations but only one storyline this episode it's a pretty good one it's um 
Dawn is uh, at the office. He's delaying um, taking a phone call. And we know it's, of course, the phone call about um, Anna and the fact that she passed away. Um, he doesn't want to take it. He doesn't want to face that reality. And meanwhile, it's also Peggy's birthday, and she's supposed to go out with her boyfriend. Um, but he... Uh, or, or she has to stay, basically, to help Dawn with work. He's kind of being a jerk to Peggy, as always. But um, her boyfriend breaks up with her because he's... Uh, you know, he's tired of her always prioritizing her work over him. Um, he tried to do something nice for her, and she's kind of getting mad at him. Women women be like that sometimes, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, they somehow find a way to get mad at you, even though it's their fault. Um, but, uh, you know, she, she she basically chooses to work over over the boyfriend, even though Dawn said she could go uh, after he kept her there for like an hour. Um, it's just because she values her work over her relationship. She's a lot like Dawn in that way. Um, and again, I think we'll, we'll see her, we'll see her kind of prioritize her career over her personal life, just like Dawn did. Um, but they have some, they have some nice character moments together where he kind of opens himself up a little bit to her. And that's also symbolized at the end there where he chooses to have the door open instead of closed. Um, so I, uh, I, I, I liked a lot of their scenes together. Um, he, he gets drunk and then again, a really funny scene where, um, fucking duck Phillips, uh, shows up looking for, he's about to like take a shit on the chair, but it's Roger Sterling's chair. It's not even Don's. Um, and they get into a fight over Peggy. Um, not that Don wants Peggy. I think he thinks that Peggy more like a daughter or even like himself. Um, but then he ends up sleeping on Peggy's lap, um, all night. And that's, it's a nice moment. Um, I almost wish the phone call would have come before they, they slept together at not, not, not like sexually, but they, you know, they, they cuddle all night. Like that would have been like, kind of nice. Um, but yeah, he gets the phone call. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's obviously, heartbroken that this woman that really knew him um died but like peggy says she knows him not the full story of course but she she can she knows him in a way more so than any of the other people at uh sterling cooper draper price uh do so they have a they have a nice little relationship there i liked it and it's also set to the backdrop of the uh uh cassius king uh sunny liston fight um very iconic boxing match, um, and, uh, yeah, cool, cool, uh, historical details there, so, um, yeah, really great episode, I don't have a lot to say, there's not a lot of plot, um, but just a lot of great character stuff, we get to learn a lot more about both Peggy and Dawn, um, I really like the two of them together, and even though it's kind of a bottle episode in the sense that it's very focused on on just this one storyline um i thought it was some very powerful imagery and it also really reminded me of this of the carousel that same kind of beat about the family dynamic um that was really great but um yeah i mean this is a short uh, you know reaction here i'll i'll just leave it at that um thanks for watching and uh we'll check out another one here sometime soon so see you guys then hey what's up everyone kino here uh back with another reaction um, I just watched the eighth episode, I believe, um, of uh, season four, um, the Summer Man. Now, this is a this is again a unique episode. I feel like they've been doing like very different stuff um, every time they've um, <clears throat> done like like almost every episode of the season has been like almost conceptually different. Like th this one begins with Don um, narrating; uh, he's writing a journal. Um, and kind of documenting his thoughts and he's talking about wanting to kind of be different, you know, be a different kind of man. Um, so he, he's swimming. He's, I guess, trying to be healthier. I guess he's maybe he's drinking a little bit less. Um, just trying to be a new Don. I think I think he's, he's in a rut right now, you know, divorce, living in a, living a, a semi sad life. I know a lot of guys watching this would be like, uh, he gets laid with, like, two or three different women this episode. Or, 
I guess technically no, not at the end, but still, like, he can basically, <laughs> you know, pull any tale he wants. He's living, he's living the dream, right? Um, but just like Don says in this episode, he has this, he has this really great line about, um, he says, we're flawed because we want more. We're ruined because we get those things and wish we had what we had. Um, which is such a fantastic line. Like, a, a lot of this show deals with, like, um, capitalism and our, and consumerism and all this kind of stuff about, like, I mean, he works in advertising, right? It's literally preying on human emotions to sell you something, but, um, you know, nothing we really buy makes us that much happier, really. Um, we end up just kind of longing for the things that we had on this quest to get what we want. So, um, just some really profound thoughts there. Um, so there's, I guess, two or three different storylines happening. Um, one is, uh, Betty and, uh, her new husband, um, Henry, Henry Francis, I think, um, he, they, they, they run into Don while they're out on a date. Uh, he's with this really young girl. Um, and uh, Betty's pissed off about that. Um, and he's pissed. The guy's pissed off because he can see that Betty still thinks a lot about Don. You know, like, even though she says, like, I hate him, I hate him. It's like he's still in her thoughts. Right. Um, and he kind of feels the competition there. Right. I mean, that's to be expected, though, when you. <laughs> When you get with a woman um, who is pregnant with another man's baby, um, there's going to be some kind of these lingering conflicts there. Um, so he's feeling the kind of jealousy there. Um, and, uh, you know, Betty, I think the the thing that Don was talking about applies a lot to Betty, too. You know, she she hates Don. I think she misses him in a lot of ways. And. I don't think they'll ever be back together. Um, I don't know if it's going to work out with this guy, Henry Francis, but, um, you know, I think she, like Dawn, is longing for the thing that she had, which was kind of their their family being put together. Um, so Betty's always struggled with what she wants out of life, so I think she she's still struggling with that, even though she quote-unquote got what she wanted, which was to break away from Dawn and, and be with this new guy. Um, and then at the end of the episode, Don goes to his, um, son's birthday, which is, you know, it seems to be a gesture of peace between the two. So, uh, we'll see how they go. I mean, I don't know, maybe they'll, some, they'll hook up together again, but, uh, I kind of think there's too much damage there. Um, but I, I, I do think, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I do think it's really interesting that we get to explore divorce. Um, we, we don't usually get that in shows like this. They're, they're in a loveless marriage. I think they're scared to break the couples apart. Like Sopranos, they got separated but came back together. Breaking Bad, they kept up. They forced them to be together. Like Walter White forced them to stay together. Um, but this one, we actually get to explore the consequences of a full-on divorce. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, another thing that's happening is uh, this one guy who I can't... I guess his name is Joey. Um, he's just been introduced this season. He he's very arrogant and very disrespectful to Joan. Um, he has this really horrible line. He says there is like you walk you're walking around here looking like you want to get raped, which is just crude and 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 crass to say to a woman. Um, and he draws his picture of uh, Joan like filleting uh, Lane. Um, so she confronts him and like tells him off, but then Peggy steps in and fires him ostensibly to protect Joan and like defend her but um as Joan points out she basically undermined Joan in order to elevate herself so now she looks like she's the boss of the, of the firm um and Joan just looks like a helpless secretary so it wasn't really for Joan it was for Peggy and that is what we kind of come to expect from Peggy she's looking out for herself so um, an interesting storyline there. Um, and then Dawn ends up going out with, uh, the Dr. Faye, I think her name is. Um, I'm terrible with names on this show, but, uh, he, he ends up going out with her and she's like really into him. She wants to sleep with him. Um, she's going through something in this episode. She has like a, a phone call at the beginning where she's yelling at someone. 
I don't know what it is, maybe a boyfriend or something, but uh, Don actually acts like a gentleman and doesn't um, want to doesn't sleep with her immediately. Because again, he's trying to turn over a new page. Although he did get a blowjob from that young girl from the beginning of the episode, so it's like. Uh, Don, it, it, Don is living a sad, quote unquote, sad life, but, um, it is a little bit hard to be too, to pity him too much when <laughs> he's literally pull every single woman on this show, he, he, he gets in their pants. Like, it's, it's just funny. Um, and I just realized that this woman, Dr. Faye, is, um, uh, Kelly Multisanti, um, Christopher's wife from The Sopranos, and she's also the, um, the mother uh in uh stranger things so I, I i finally recognized her she's got a different hairstyle every time in soprano she was a brunette this one she's a blonde stranger things uh i can't remember what it is but but, but very different looks um so that's cool to see that uh she's been in, in a number of different things but um yeah that's uh that's pretty much everything i had to say about this episode i'm probably gonna watch another one here um and i'll uh talk to you guys soon Hey, what's up, everyone? Back with a, uh, another episode reaction. Um, just watched the ninth episode. Um, it's called The Beautiful Girls. Um, now, this episode's interesting. Um, we... I don't I'm just... I'm describing... I'm thinking about which storyline I should talk about first. Um, basically, uh, Sally, Dawn's daughter runs away and takes the subway to new york to um to see him because she hates living with her mom she wants to be with, live with dawn um and so he's kind of flabbergasted by this and right while she's like there um mrs blankenship uh the old uh secretary lady that dawn's had for a few episodes now just dies just drops dead um which was you know tragic but very funny too like this woman was added so much humor to the series. I, I just loved the way she would like, um, <laughs> she would like buzz that someone was in his office after they already entered. It was, it was so funny. Um, but it, it makes, uh, you know, the character sad because they've known this woman for a long time. I think they said even before like Burt Cooper and her might've been involved when they were younger. Um, and, uh, he gives this nice obituary to her. He says, um, uh, she, she was born in a barn and she died on like the 37th floor of a skyscraper. She was an astronaut, which I thought was a very beautiful, uh, way to phrase it, um, her life. Um, but so we got a lot of humor, a lot of tragedy this episode, um, Dawn introduces Sally to, uh, Faye, his girlfriend, um, there's some conflict there because she feels like she's not good with kids, um, cause she's never had them. Um, and at the end of the episode, Sally trips and then, uh, this one secretary, I think her name is Megan. Um, she kind of like hugs and comforts her and they drew a lot of attention to her. So I think that like Dawn's going to probably end up with this <laughs> woman too, like, Oh, Jesus Christ. How many secretaries is this guy going to go through? She's just a new secretary, too. So it's like, um, I think there's going to be something there. <laughs> so uh, we'll see. But um, there's another storyline with, uh, uh, what's her name? F Why am I blanking on it? Uh, Peggy. Uh, she uh, is kind of seeing this one writer guy that she met. Um at the at the beatnik party she was at um and he is like she, he so he's talking about um the civil rights movement that's going on right now you know equal equal rights for african americans um and peggy is kind of being um i don't know what the right word for this is but uh i don't know bill burr has this funny thing where he's like like he he makes a joke about like white women basically like comparing themselves to black people and being like we suffer too and and peggy has this whole thing where she's like well i worked my way up to you know where i'm at why can't african americans do the same um which is uh you know definitely not peggy's <laughs> best moment here um but uh 
she she does seem to be taking a little bit more of an interest in like politics and stuff and like women's rights and you know civil liberties and all this kind of stuff um although she's firmly on the side of you know corporations because that's how she's made her living you know that's their kind of bread and butter so an interesting an interesting philosophical discussion that um does not make peggy look the best uh but regardless um she kind of breaks up with this guy because he wants to write i guess like a piece about her for the newspaper or something i don't know but uh basically it didn't work out with this guy um but you know i think i think he did inspire her to be a little bit more political so uh we'll see how that goes um and then the last storyline is with um uh joan and uh roger sterling so they go out to dinner you know it's he's interested in her still but um you know she's like i have a husband blah 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 but then they get mugged on their way uh, home, um, and it's kind of like a traumatic experience for them. And then they end up like making love right there in like an alleyway. Um, so uh, you know, there's still that flame there. Like I, I felt like they've not really like explored Roger and Joan together, despite the fact that from the first episode that was kind of like, oh, you know there, there's a there's a romance here but it's kind of bubbling under the surface so it's it's interesting to see where they'll go with that um maybe they'll get together i kind of don't think so um but there there is this kind of deep attraction between the two um and uh yeah there's definitely chemistry there but that's all that i really have to say um i i found the ending a little bit confusing that's like the beautiful like there was a lot of like all the storylines were kind of girl centric, um, but I didn't get. So the title is called "The Beautiful Girls," and it ends on this shot with um, Joan, Peggy, and Faye um, in in the elevator together, and I couldn't quite tell what the show was trying to say. Like, I mean, they're all beautiful, but like, what, what the, was it? Is it about women or women's rights or something? I don't. I didn't quite get the message there. Like, and, and you throw in, like, Sally into the mix, too, there. But I, there wasn't, like, a clear, like, feminist theme that came out of this episode for me. So the title and the last ending shot, I felt like they were trying to say something. But it just the message just kind of, kind of muddled for me. I, I didn't know what they were trying to say. Um, but uh, that's really all I had to say about this one. Uh, I'm probably going to watch another one right now. Uh, I am really enjoying this season. So probably knock out at least one more here. So... Talk to you guys then. Hey, what's up, everyone? Back again. Um, just watched the tenth episode. Is it? Um, hands and knees. So this is an interesting one in terms of plot. Um, so basically, a number of crises are happening at once. Um, uh, Dawn. So they're in business with uh, this uh, airplane manufacturing company, government contracts, so they need security clearance. Um, so Don uh, accidentally gets, like, he accidentally fills out a form. Um, his secretary gave it to him, and he signed it just without thinking. Um, and uh, it's a problem because now the FBI are doing a background check on him, and uh it's eventually going to come up that he's not who he says he is and his desertion all that kind of stuff um so he has like a panic attack um he ends up telling Faye about it um which uh is good that he finally admitted it to someone besides betty and pete and stuff but um he eventually gets pete to like end the account so that you know he doesn't get in trouble for it um and i'm like okay i get it like it's like it's dawn um and pete is like ultimately the firm is better with dawn than without him so he loses the account even though it costs them four million dollars um but it's like dawn like dawn is just really shitty like he's i don't know this conflict just seems kind of like it's not just that, like, it's his secret that they're keeping, but it's, like, he filled out the form without even thinking, like, or, or he signed the form that the secretary filled out without even being flagged. It's, like, 
Like, come on. This makes him look like such an asshole. And I don't think they were, like, intended... They sometimes make Don look like an asshole, but um, in this way, it was, like... It's so petty, right? The fact that they now lose his account because Don couldn't take two seconds to look at this document before he signed it. Uh, I'm like... I don't know, Don, you're kind of a piece of shit. Like, I get that he's, like, the marketing genius, but it really kind of doesn't seem like he does that much. Um, so I don't have that much sympathy for him where it's like, why did you fill this out for me and let me sign it without looking at it? It's like, well, then pay more fucking attention. Stop taking naps and swimming in the middle of the day. And I know it's part of your creative genius, but um, I don't know. I, I really... That beat specifically just made me be like, Don, you're such a piece of shit. <laughs> he reminds me of bosses who do none of the work and like take all the credit. And I get that, yes, he is very good at, at marketing and stuff, but um, I don't know. I don't really see it right now. But Pete, Pete takes a, a bullet for him, which is like, God damn, I came away with this respecting Don less and, re and respecting Pete more. I didn't know how to, I didn't know that was possible, but I did. Um, so we, we, we do that. Um, meanwhile, though, Roger Sterling um, has lost a lucky strike or might lose lucky strike, which is going to be like a death blow to the firm. Like they, they are like 70% of the firm's revenue. Like they cannot deal if they lose it. So I think Roger bought himself some time, but he's kind of screwed if uh, the company's screwed if they lose it. So. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a, a major plot point moving forward. Um, but yeah, that's really the um, the episode is those two crises. Um, you know, there's this thing with like, oh, there's also this thing with Joan being pregnant by Roger um, as they hooked up last episode. Um, so now she's uh, she's pregnant and she has to go get an abortion because she doesn't want you know her husband to know. Um, and yeah, Joan's conflict is so, uh, so interesting. You know, it's like, I don't know what to make of her sometimes. She's like so contradictory. Like all she's wanted is to be like the wife of a doctor and to have a baby and all this kind of stuff. And, but she, like, this is not the first time she's gotten rid of a child. So it's like. She want like she says she wants it, but like circum like her choices and her circumstances have kind of conspired to make it so it's not happening the way she's wanted it to. It's I don't know if I'd describe it as tragic, but it's like it's very contradictory. It's very interesting her character. I talked about it before, like her whole thing of like she's like a very traditionally feminine person, like again, it just wants to be a wife and not work and stuff like that, but it's like she doesn't even know what she wants, you know, like, and when she gets it, it's not actually what she wanted. Again, it's kind of like what Dawn was saying last episode about um, we're flawed because we want more and we're ruined because we get it. Um, so I she's she's a great example of that. I, I don't know what to make of her sometimes, like I said. Um, but again, I know this is another short reaction, but that's really all I have to say. I'm. Um, I am really liking the season. I keep, I keep mentioning that. Um, I don't necessarily have a lot to go over beat by beat, but um, I do sometimes. I'm also kind of annoyed that I have to like come record these and like interrupt my watch because I would love to just play the next episode right now. <laughs> like um, just because I am enjoying like these characters, these beats. Um, I think I've described it somewhere before, but this feels like kind of a cross between. Uh, the Sopranos and The Wire in terms of its storytelling. Um, and I really like that. It's uh, It feels like a very mature show. Like, it's not taking the easy way out with telling stories. It's not being cheap. It's not being um, uh, sensationalist. It feels like slow-burning and meaningful. Um, and, uh, yeah, I really, I really liked pretty much every season I've been watching. So... Um, anyway, uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll check in the next one soon. Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, back with another reaction. Um, and this is episode 11, I think. Um, Chinese Wall. Now, uh, <clears throat> this is a uh, an interesting one in terms of the plot. Like, 
the 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 firm is in a very bad position now that um uh lucky strike has left it's not just that this really big client left and and their billings are lower like they could survive if it was just that um but one of the problems is all their other clients are starting to get worried that their firm is going to close shop so um they end up losing glow coat which is uh the the one that Don won the award for earlier, so it's like that that really stings because they did they did such a good job with that, um, but uh, yeah, the, so the, we've got a number of cool things happening. They're not cool, but like interesting character stuff. Uh, ones with Roger Sterling, like again, he knew about this for like thirty days, but he didn't say anything just because, um, he didn't. I guess he just didn't want to look weak or foolish or something, but he ended up looking that way anyway. Um, Cause everyone's like, you had one job to do here and you neglected it. Um, and again, he's just childish. Like Roger Strong is like a child. Um, so it's, it, it's all coming back to bite him. Uh, Joan, you know, kind of, she doesn't break up with him cause they're not together, but like, she's like, we can't do this anymore. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's just kind of, you know, he's like, what's my life come to? Now, granted, he's still, <clears throat> you know, very wealthy. Um, you know, uh, he's got a beautiful young wife that he, again, left his wife of many years for to be with this young girl. Um, and now he's restless with her, too. So it's like, oh, Roger, you're such a child. Um, but, uh... We got that going on. We got Dawn. He has Dawn has a fight with Faye because he wanted her to get him meetings with like important clients that are unhappy where they're at. Because I guess she's like a freelancer who works for like different agencies and stuff. So um, they they have a big fight over it, and then Dawn ends up sleeping with uh, Megan, his secretary. I knew I knew that was gonna happen. Last episode too, I think it ended with him looking at her, being like, "Oh my god, she's gorgeous." Um, so he ended up sleeping with her and then at the end phase, like, I went ahead and did that bad thing you wanted me to do. So it's like, oh god, Don, you're <laughs> uh you're such a piece of shit. Um it reminded me of that moment when um Betty bought him like a watch or had his watch engraved right after he'd had sex with someone else, and it's like, oh god, I'm a piece of shit. Um <coughs> excuse me. Uh what else? Oh, uh uh what's his name? Pete has a daughter, so that that's cool. That finally happens. Um, Peggy, there's a storyline with Peggy and again that art director guy who I don't even know his name. Um, he uh, he kisses her. He wants her bad, you know. Even though he always acts like she's like ugly and stuff, um, he wants her badly. And uh, I think she nailed the Playtex commercial. I or Playtex, you know, pitch to them. So hopefully they get that, but um, we'll see how it goes with the company. Lane's in England, so he's out of commission with all this. So it's like, what are they going to do? I, I think they'll rally. I think they'll rally and, and we'll get behind them. Because I just, they already broke up the team once. Like, I cannot see them, like, breaking up the company again. Um, but uh, we'll have to see. I mean, Pete got an offer to be a part, a full partner with another company He's kind of like the junior partner here at, at Sterling Cooper Draper Price. So uh, we'll see. But I, I don't think he's going anywhere. He he, he likes that company where, where they're at. So um, again, I know these are getting shorter and shorter. I just don't have a lot to talk about. Um, but uh, I'm going to watch another one right now because <laughs> it is pretty good. So uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm coughing a lot. Um, I'll leave it there. Uh, we'll talk about the next episode soon, but I, I think we're going to get some really juicy bits coming up here. So I'll save the long recaps for that. So uh, talk to you guys in a bit. All right, back with a, uh, another episode of Reaction. This is uh, the second to last episode of the season, uh, Blowing Smoke, which um, is connected both like in terms of the title and also thematically the episode to the, to the pilot episode, Smoke It's In Your Eyes. Um, so in that one, you know, in the pilot episode, it was all about the tobacco ad. Um, and in this one, they finally break away from tobacco. Um, they, they, they couldn't land any more tobacco accounts. So, uh, Dawn writes this, um, advertise, like 
it's not an advertisement. It's like a, a letter to the New York Times um, where he basically says we're done with with tobacco advertisements. You know, it's it's immoral to do them. Like we're we're moving in a different direction. And all the partners are really angry at him because they're like, we need tobacco. There's so much money there. Um, but I think Don was smart in that it's like, if they just kept doing what they were doing, they were just going to die a slow death. Going a different direction like this might be enough to get them new business. We'll have to see next episode. There are layoffs at the end of this one. So, um, um, you know, it's sad to see that happen, but um, nothing else they can do. All the partners also had to put up like a big cash um, collateral uh, in order to get a line of credit to keep the business afloat for six months. Um, and uh, the problem is, though, is that Pete Campbell doesn't have that kind of money. Again, he's not been a partner for long. He's not wealthy. Um, personally, he's got, he's got like, you know, 22,000, which is uh, probably close to like maybe 60 to 80,000 in today's money. It's quite a lot, but um, not enough for the 50K he needs. But at the end of the episode, Don pays for his share. So it's like, okay, Don got him back for, for protecting him with his identity. So I was like, okay, Don, Don has my respect there again a little bit. Um, I was I was glad to see that because Pete for once has been doing the right thing for, for an entire season, basically. Um but uh, we'll, we'll have to see where he goes from there. Um, we also have uh, the return of that one kid, Glenn, I think his name is. Um, it's uh, it's Matt Weiner's son. Um, he's friends with Sally, and they've been just hanging out, talking. Um, and then Betty sees them hanging out, and uh, she gets mad. She says the boy's no good um and uh, forbids her daughter to see him and at the end of the episode she says they're gonna move so it's like um sally is heartbroken that uh she's gonna lose one of again she's got very little in her life this kid's one of her only friends um and now she's gotta let uh him go and it's also very indicative of of who betty is like she's very childish a great symbolic element of that is the fact that she's seeing a child psychologist in the room she's sitting in has like stuffed animals and stuff. Um, it's very much she she has the kind of the emotional reactions of a child, basically. Um, and uh, I think on some level, she's a little bit jealous of Sally seeing this boy because she was she had a weird relationship with this kid again. Some people were saying she's acting like a pedophile. No, she wasn't. She was just, again, she's like a child. So she kind of saw Glenn almost like someone she could talk to. Um, and, uh, yeah, now that's gone. So, um, yeah, we'll see where they go with that. But uh, I don't know. I feel like I might cut this one short again, too, guys. I, I know there's stuff going on here. Um, but I just want to watch the finale. <laughs> I just want to watch the next one because I think some interesting stuff could happen. Um, you know, uh, Don and, and Faye are still together, but I think they'll probably break up next episode, especially since he slept with Megan. Um, oh, the other thing I guess that happened was um, Don uh, ran into the artist girl he was uh, dating in the pilot. Like it was his girlfriend at the time. Um, and she's like a heroin addict now, which is very sad to see. Um, she kind of like, I guess her painting maybe inspired Dawn to do that thing he did. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was sad to see her in that state. And it's like, uh, the hippie lifestyle can seem fun sometimes, but, uh, yeah, once drugs get their hooks into you, it's, uh, it's not good. I'll take, I'll take Dawn's, uh, you know, uh, high powered business life over, <laughs> over being a, uh, free spirit hippie junkie any day. Um, but yeah, I think I'll leave it there. Um, I'm just going to watch the next one and I will talk about the season as a whole. Because um, I, I feel like some interesting stuff is going to happen here. So uh, I'll check back in with you guys real quick here. All right, so forgive the hair. I was laying down and watching the episode on my phone. But um, man, what a good episode. Um, just finished the uh, the season finale, um, Tomorrowland. Uh, cause they go to, they go to Disneyland in this one, um, which, uh, man, what, a, what a good episode. Like, 
not a lot of stuff happened in terms of plot. I mean, there's one big thing that happens, which is Dawn and Megan get engaged, which comes out of nowhere. But um, it makes sense when you think about Dawn and, and what he's doing. He's, you know, he goes back to California. He sees the house where, um, you know, Anna lives. She's now dead. Um, and he gets he gets the their engagement ring that the original Donald Draper gave Anna. Um, and, uh, Megan is, like, taking care of his kids, and he sees how great she is with them. There's this moment where, um, Sally spills a milkshake, and, um, Megan just reacts very calmly. She's like, it's okay, you know, we can take care of it. And he's, he's, I think he's instantly contrasting it in his mind with how Betty was, like, just how tight, tightly wound and angry she was, um... So he's like, oh, this should make a great, um, you know, mother figure to my to my kids. And um, again, he's dealing with all the emotion he's been through. Um, so he uh, he he proposes to her out of nowhere. Um, you know, they slept together a few a few episodes ago, but um, and they slept together here in California. But he's like, I think in some ways he's running away from like pain you could say pain with um with anna and all the other stuff in his life and he's just jumping headfirst into this thing um i i think it's i think he sees a very idealized version of megan like again we don't we we've not seen anything bad with her but we also barely know her as a character and dawn barely knows her um she seems nice but um, I have a feeling that things are going to become rocky as the honeymoon period wears off and they, uh, you know, they, uh, they start to really have to, to be who, who they are. Like she says she knows Don, but I don't think she knows him. I don't think he knows himself. So, uh, we'll really have to see, but, um, uh, there's this great moment where, um, where, uh, Betty, okay, so B- Betty in this episode, uh, the guy, Glenn, he comes over to say goodbye to Sally and um, uh, Betty catches him and they have this kind of, you know, angry confrontation. Um, and uh, she, she fires Carla, the, the nanny who's been with them since the very beginning, um, for letting the boy over. And she's acting, again, very childish. Even Henry's had enough of her. Um and there's this moment between Dawn and Betty um, in the kitchen at, at at the end there where it's like it almost seems like she wants to maybe get back together because they're 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 kind of like they're going to sell the house. Um, Betty's moving and Dawn's going to sell the house. Um, so like they're kind of having this nostalgic feeling about, you know, the early days of their marriage and stuff. Um and uh, then Don tells her he's getting married and that kind of shuts it down. But um, I think she was briefly thinking about like, oh, man, I, I, I used to like how it was with Don. Um, and I, I don't think there's any reality where they could get back together. But um, there's this I don't know, this is really profound moment where they they leave in two different rooms and there's this bottle in between them. And it's like. Again, people, I, I mentioned in one of my streams before that people were making fun of me that they asked me who my favorite character on Mad Men was, and I said Betty for the first two seasons. Um, but I really like Betty, and I sympathize with her in a lot of ways. Again, she's not perfect. Um, she's childish. She reacts very badly, but so does Don, you know, in his own way. So um, I, I'm sad to see Betty, um, you know, so unhappy. Some of it's her own making, but um, th- there there's a lot of truth i think in betty's character um they uh they they seem to capture that again that that kind of trapped feeling that um a lot of housewives feel and if she's childish i think it's because she has not really had the opportunity to kind of get out into the world and like understand herself so maybe i don't know maybe i'm uh giving her the benefit of the doubt here but um she reminds me of a lot of women who I know in this kind of lifestyle. Um, and so I can, I just have some sympathy for her. Um, even though I don't agree with all of her choices, uh, of course. Um, but, uh, what else, what else, what else here? Um, 
Peggy lands, uh, uh, I guess, a pantyhose uh, co- uh, company. Um, and then at the end, she's kind of commiserating with Joan about how the fact that, you know, none of her work pales in comparison to the fact that Don's marrying his secretary. It's like he's always going to prioritize, you know, the hot girl over her. So, um, yeah, that's just how it goes there. Um, and then also Joan uh, is, I guess she decided to keep the baby um, and she uh, is going to tell her, she told her husband who's in Vietnam that it's his. Uh, so uh, even though it's Roger Sterling's. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty sure he's going to die in Vietnam. I think they're going to make a story out of that. Um, and that will free her up to maybe open up the possibility of her getting with Roger Sterling. But I don't think it's going to happen. Um just because I, I just I know how dramas go. It's like you, you never get the ending that you really want. Um, or if you get it, it doesn't turn out to be the way you wanted it. Again, I keep thinking back to that line that Don had about wanting things versus ruin and all that kind of stuff. So um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see where they go with that. But um, yeah, I think the title Tomorrowland you know, that's a that's a section for those of you who don't never been to Disneyland that's like a section of Disneyland um it's all about the future and technology and all this stuff and it's this very kind of idealized like um how would i describe it kind of like the Jetsons version it's like like art deco like u- utopia technology kind of stuff where it's all about the um optimism of the future of technology of life all that kind of stuff so and i think like i said thematically it relates to dawn's very idealized thinking of what the future will be like with megan um versus just knowing how dramas go like i said i don't think it's going to turn out the way either of them necessarily think it is but we'll, we'll see you know maybe we only have we have three more seasons actually five six and seven i believe so uh, we got a while, so we'll we'll see. We're we're I think we're a little bit past the halfway point here. Um, but man, I don't I don't know. I kind of want to watch the next one, but I really feel like I should sit with um with this season for a while. It's good to kind of have a a, a close, not just binge watch it through. I hate I hate binge watching culture, even though you can tell from my shirts that I've been watching all these episodes back to back. Um, but I, I really feel like I would like to sit with this for a little bit while and uh, just just feel the impact of the choices that the characters have made um, rather than just going through it and being numb to it all. That's how I consume media. But um, anyway, thank you guys for watching my rambling nonsense about this show. I uh, even though even though a lot of these episodes, I didn't talk about them really in depth. I have really enjoyed this season. Like I said, I I really want to watch some more because these characters and the choices they make are, are extremely interesting, even if nothing necessarily is ha- big is happening with the plot. So um, I'll leave it there with you guys um, and uh, stay tuned for the next reaction, next season of Mad Men reactions coming soon. Talk to you guys then.